Um, the next question or the next segment, sorry, I'm going to hand over to Adrian Walker. Hopefully, Adrian, you can share um, now from the City of Bradford Metropolitan District Council, who will be presenting on virtual Bradford. So, Adrian, over to you, please. Uh, good morning, everybody. Hopefully you're able to see the screen and you are able to hear me. We can, yes. And Excellent. <clears throat> So first thing is thank you very much to everybody for this opportunity to uh, present Virtual Bradford. Um, quick bit of background, my name's Adrian Walker and I work for the uh, for, for the planning department at Bradford Council. And can I say it's been a bit of a challenge to do this with a number of slides and time and I'm going to do my best. Uh, just so you're aware, a colleague is online from the University of Bradford, uh, uh, Professor Andrew Wilson. Uh, so if there's any questions, hopefully he'll be able to help me and, and field them. Your screen has just disappeared. Sorry. Uh, just a second. Sorry. I think that's because I clicked the wrong button, so I apologise. No problem. It's just coming through now. Yep. So hopefully we're on to the next slide. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so, so what's the difference? Well, well, the difference. Um, well, there's all the usual stuff that you hear about digital twins and and things like that. So you know. Um, uh, but it's, it's been an aspiration for a long time for Bradford to have a, a digital twin. It's just that we've not had the finances or the resources to be able to do it. But around about four years ago, uh, fortunately, Bradford Council became part of a European project called SCORE, which is about smart cities and open data reuse. And for this part, we'll be, we'll be focusing on the, the open data and the reuse. So to satisfy the council and the SCORE aspirations, um, and we'll come back to this in a minute, the university are going to provide a LOD3 specification of a, of a digital twin, which will be in city GML format. And that will also include uh, some textured imagery uh, to drape over those buildings. The brilliant thing for what I think is really different about this is that this model is going to be provided in an open source format, but also open for anybody to use for any purpose that they want. And because of that, it's going to be from a, a, a copyright free map projection as well. That's not to have a go at the Ordnance Survey. It's just about how we can make this available for anybody to use. And obviously we took into consideration that it had to be reprojected into British National Grid. The vast majority of our data within the council is in British National Grid, and we want to be able to um, you know, join those two or many data sets together. It's a new way of working. It's a fantastic visualization and an analytical tool that will dis, you know, it will deliver the aspiration of the council in many ways beyond the ways which are on the list. It's going to be a 4D model, so it's going to be capable of being maintained and expanded upon by the council, by the university, by businesses, developers, and with the appropriate governance, we really want to be enable our citizens to uh, update and maintain this model. Different way of thinking again is about, you know, the current 2D planning system means that many cit citizens are, are hampered from really understanding development. And it's really develop really disappointing about how developers of major schemes in many cases create 3D models for us for their own purposes, only to produce 2D drawings to support a planning application. It's such a disappointing thing. I think this digital twin, and I, I stand by the statements, only limited by your imagination. It's what you want to use it for. Uh, in other presentations, we've had some really interesting ideas, and we can't wait to go back to those individuals to work with them to do it, and sometimes maybe to even really understand what they meant. So, how did it come about? Well, it wouldn't have happened without the SCORE project. That's given us the resources and the money. Uh, it was up. It was won by an open tender by the School of Archaeological and Forensic Sciences at the University of Bradford. And when you say that, you think, well, what do they know about digital twins? Now, when you look at what they what they are doing, um, so they've they've been they've been capturing 3D data from the tiniest of things to this, which is Fountains Abbey, which is just north of the district. It's actually outside our area. But you can see how they're capable of capturing things above ground, but also below ground. These are burial, I'm just going to say but, you know, graves of monks and things. You know, this is what the kind of thing they're, they're, they're about. And the great thing I think for them is they're currently in receipt of the Queen's Anniversary Prize for Higher Education, Higher and Further Education, sorry. 
Let's not forget, though, there is a bit of a commercial contract here. We're in a commercial contract with Bradford, but this is turning into more of a partnership day by day. And I wish I had time to talk to you more about that. Into the technical stuff. So this is how they're capturing the digital twin of Bradford. Um, as far as we're aware, this setup doesn't exist anywhere in the world. Parts of it do, uh, and parts of it are on different commercial type of things, um, but not, in, not like this. If there's any technical questions, hopefully Andy can answer it, or we'll take questions and come back to you. They capture these wonderful point clouds, and the data has been captured at a much higher level than LOD3. And part of the contract is the university can use that for and sell that for any purpose that they want. Bradford's a centre for uh, film and photography. You know, we have programmes which are made here in Bradford. We're interested about how the digital twin, twin can be used uh, to help and augment that. Obviously, we're going to be using a drone. Obviously, it feels like obviously uh, we're going to be using a drone to capture the, the complex roofs in Bradford. The university did investigate free LIDAR resources, but they found that they just didn't work. But I believe they're going to write a paper or a document about that for everybody to see. So what is it? Well, it's it, you know, it's a it's a visual representation of this. Sorry, I'm showing you a visual representation of what's being captured on the ground. Um, the council's been able to capture 843 listed structures. We've got three almost complete conservation areas, which will mean something to you planners out there. We could, you know, I can't go into the detail. 266 council land and property assets, nearly 4,200 addressable properties, two train stations, a bus station, and there's probably tons and tons more. But an unanticipated sort of gain that we've had, and one that I wasn't aware of when it started, but I think the university were, is that we've created a historical digital twin. We can't underestimate there are 843 listed structures in there and we went through the list. But having a digital model of historical uh, heritage provides a tool that enables analysis and simulations for the continued reuse of those historic structures and how new proposals will interact with them. The historical digital twin will, in, will, will assist in understanding of 3D projects, promotion of social, social interaction between architects, historic, his, historians, visitors, historical and, and historical heritage sites. And the potential for use of augmented reality as a tool to allow users to interact with the digital historical model and how it allows us people allows others to experience that without actually having to go there. <clears throat> so the image on so you know where we are with virtual, virtual Bradford proof of concept where next so on the left hand side, there's an image from uh, ArcGIS as a visualization tool. Uh, the facades are now correct, uh, but the roof and the well within that building are being captured by the drone. And believe it or not, we finally got to at, at least one drone in the sky today, I believe, which is great. So we're going to start and capture that. And remember about the future direction. It's about smart cities and open data reuse. So the image on the right hand side shows that how we're all ready. Oh, sorry, the university have already secured funding to do uh, Saltaire, which again is within the Bradford district. It's a historical uh, Victorian model village, which was built in 1851 by Sir Titus Salt and was a leading industrialist in the Yorkshire woolen industry. But they're also going to Bagamoya in Tanzania. The university won another bid and the same tools will be used to model that historical uh, town. Uh, which was founded in the eight, end of the 18th century, but is believed to be an extension of a much older 8th century property. I think I kept to time. There's some contact details. Please do get in contact with us. Thank you very much. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, Adrian.